Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> same old, same old. Sunday morning. Go through the usual things we carry on with, pointing out the non-duality of everything. <laughs> and so it's nothing that's really needs to be got, it's just to recognition and see that everything is that. And the whole manifestation is nothing but things. Mm. You and I are things. The chair, the carpet, the table, the sky, all things which we've discriminated by putting the names on the shapes and forms. And that's all that things are, vibrating patterns into different shapes and forms. Mm. But we've taken them to be some thing when we put the label on. And that's where all the discrimination comes about instead of seeing being the non-dual essence that already is and always has been, the silence, the stillness, the basic empty screen, we take ourselves to be separate, individual and apart from it. And then that separation, that idea of separation comes upon us, with it comes a sense of insecurity. If you think you're separate from something and don't know what it is, you're not too sure about it. That brings about the insecurity. And when you, that sense of insecurity is there, a, you feel very vulnerable too. Because if there's something other than me that can get at me or do, <laughs> do me damage or hurt me. So that's where all our problems start from. But in the non dual, one without a second, pure intelligence energy, the godliness, if you like to use that term, or the reality, that is all there is, nothing separate apart from that. That is absolute. It's per perfect, absolute. And that's how it always really is and always and ever has been. And they tell you that in Buddhism, for instance, the great perfection is non-conceptual awareness. It's that awareness without any concepts, mental constructs or thoughts. And in Hinduism they call it that Chittananda Nama Rupa, existence, consciousness, bliss, name and form. Existence, are you existing right now? Yes, are you conscious right now? Are you happy to be, loving to be? You certainly are. You wouldn't want to be dead. Or even if you're miserable, you still wouldn't want to be dead. And the name, of, name and root of the name and form of Maya, or illusion. Just like all the rest of this manifestation is Maya, it's illusion. It's all vibrating patterns of energy which seemingly solid and substantial. And that's why they call it a phenomenal manifestation, a definition made of a phenomena. And the definition of phenomena is that which appears to be. Mm -hmm. Appears means it seems to be so. And look out there and see the analogies they, that make you realise that. The sea appears to be blue. Mm -hmm. But you and I, yeah, and you don't have to take much investigation into seeing the water is never blue. It never is blue at all. It's, uh, the sky appears to be blue. There seems to be a blue canopy over the sky when there's no clouds and the sun shining. But there's no blue in the sky, it's space. And there's space in this room right now, it's not blue. Mm -hmm. And does that space encompass anything? Does that room enclose that space? It doesn't. And is there anything can enclose it. And do you think there's an end or a finish to space somewhere? Like you can try and fly to the end of space. Try and get it out of it. You can't. Space is no thing. But it has no centre or no 
boundaries outside. So there's nothing, no inside and no outside because nothing can enclose it yes. or encapsulate it. So it's that one space patterning, shaping and forming and everything appears in it. So it's, it's a vibrating pattern, subtly vibrating, you know, subtle movement of energy. And what vibrated and spontaneously happened is a, you could say it's a magnetic field or something in it that draws upon it or movement, causes a movement. But take the ocean or water when it's calm and still and serene. So it's somewhat of a movement that stirs in it. Mm. And it forms a ripple, it forms a wave. But the ripples, waves, and sp foam, spray are all still nothing but water. And that's what all the ways this manifestation appears is nothing but that one essence that's vibrating in a different pattern, shape, and form. So, what's so hard? about recognising, recognising that and seeing it for yourself. But we've taken on the belief that we are this separate entity, we are this person, we are this individual. And we reinforce that belief because we learnt the words and our parents told us, you little Billy or your little Johnny or little Jane or so and so. And then the more thoughts, I, this is me, this is what I am. And everything comes about through words, the learning of words, and words of sound, and sounds of vibration, and the vibrations of movement of energy. So the whole thing is all movement of energy. Energy is an activity, and the, and the intelligence that's patterning, shape, and forming these things implies it's suffused with an innate intelligence because the things, pattern shapes and forms around you, they're formed in an intelligent way. They're not willy-nilly blobs of glue flowing a, a, a blob of paint on a canvas and <laughs> making something out of it like a lot of the artists do. <laughs> it's intelligence suffusing a lot of it. Intelligence is knowing, not the intellect. And uh, knowing the I and unit is an activity. So the intelligence energy is an activity of knowing. And isn't it what's these patterns are suffused, these human forms and every are suffu suffused with that intelligence energy. And that's where they enable us to form words, pattern words, and put the belief into the words through intelligence. So people talk about it's not the get intellectual understanding, it's not the intellect at all. But go beyond the intellect and see it's pure intelligence, it's even enabling that so called intellect, the capacity of reasoning, to be there. Yeah. It couldn't be there without that capacity. And that capacity of reasoning, another name for it, is life. You put it intelligence, energy, you put it godliness, you put it knowledge, but it's basically life. And without that life essence in the body, what is it? It's a corpse, dead. What can it do without the life essence? It's still got the organs in it before it rots and breaks down altogether. It's still got the eyes, the ears, the heart, the lung, the hair, the fingernails, the cells, all these organs are in it, but if that life essence is not going through those organs and fusing it, it's not a bit of good to anyone, the body. So what is that, what would you, what would you realise from knocking it right and recognising that? You must recognise I am this life. I don't know what life is, but I know I am, I can only be that life, that animating intelligence energy. The animating is the movement. I am that vibration or movement that's fusing it. 
and forming all these thoughts words. And all these words are being learnt, being picked up, that intelligence formed, the words are formed in, has put meaning into it. And the meaning is try, it was what discriminates it, what changes it. And look at the way it goes. See, it's a vibration. What's the vibration? A movement, somewhat of a movement. And it moves up, down, left or right, or <laughs> diagonally, <laughs> like the, the needle of a compass that goes north, north, east, and all the rest of all the different ways it points to. But oh, but. There are no boundaries at the end of them, except what we put on by the word. This is good. How much can it further can it go from that? Yeah. And this is bad. How much further can it go from that? This is pleasant. This is painful. We put the boundaries and limitations. Now, what boundaries has space got on it? Mm. You can fly to the end of the space if you can. You'll be going for a long time, I think. Because it, well, and uh, so it's got no boundaries. What centre? What centre has it got? What can you pinpoint a centre to space? A place where star, a place where space starts, where it begins. Is there a static point somewhere? You realise there couldn't possibly be. Couldn't possibly be a centre. So that would be the centre to it. And we've got this, in this manifestation, what we do, we've taken on a self-centre, a static point, a self-centre. We believe this personal self has a beginning, it has an end. And there is a static point in this body somewhere where it starts from. But can you find it? Has anyone ever found it? We take it for granted that in the belief that it's there, but question your belief. Mm. We've believed so many things what we've been told without reading. And that's the definition of belief, an unquestioned acceptance of something in the absence of reason. When we haven't reasoned it out, we haven't looked at it. Acceptance of an alleged fact. Now, until it's looked at, it's that, and you think something's a fact that's alleged to be a fact, you accept it. An acceptance of an alleged fact without positive knowledge or proof. How would you get positive knowledge or proof? Well, it's a fact. Investigate it. Pull it apart. Have a look and see what you can see. Pull this self-centre, this reference point of heart, this me, this personal self that you think you are. Try and show me a thing called me. Is there a static point to it anywhere? And when did this me begin? You'll say it by began at birth. But you can't remember your birth. Why don't you remember it? Because you had no words. You couldn't pinpoint it without a static conceptual image about it all. So you had no words to pinpoint it. But you've taken a belief that you began at so and so. Mm -hmm. But you were born, of course you were born, but you don't remember it. And also, did you begin at birth? You had no words, you couldn't, didn't begin. But weren't you forming nine months in the room, womb with, through the capacity of reasoning, investigating these things, and what formed in the womb, which is you today. Mm. Wasn't it the essence of the food of your father and the breath he's breathing that formed in that body, through the intelligence in that body, formed a thing called a sperm, and the same in your mother, the essence of the food and the breath, the breath and the food, very essential to keep this pattern, could call the body alive, formed a, an egg or an ovum in the mother. And that egg was suffused with intelligence because it attached itself to the wall of the uterus. And the sperm was suffused with that innate intelligence that swam to the ovum. It has the capacity of swimming. So you think it began at birth. Now look at that. What, the same thing that formed that formed you, it formed your father and your mother, taken back as far as you can and see if you can find a beginning to it. When it 
other things before, you know, my <laughs> form, air, air you're breathing and the earth and all the food you're eating to form the body even. And did it have any beginning anywhere? Right, and it's all that one intelligence energy, suffusing everything. There's no s static point where anything ever began and there'll be no static point where anything can ever end because it's all taking place in space. Now have a look at space. Can you find a pinpoint in space anywhere that can say this begins or an end to it? You can't. Now space, to what you're looking at, is no thing. There's no thing whatsoever. Now, what do we do? We've read about this and we learn about it and think we've got to become realised or liberated and we meditate. What do you do when you meditate? What are you looking for? You're trying to find stillness and space. Now isn't that bloody ridiculous? <laughs> when you, when you, <laughs> because space is the very first thing you see. It's closer to you than your breathing, nearer than your hands and the feet, as the poet says. But you close your eyes when you meditate, so you can't see the space. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to get to that, and the silence is already, sound appears on silence. Sound is a vibration, the movement of energy. So that's what they say. You can't get it by becoming it, you are already that. And you've always been already that. It's just a matter of recognising, <laughs> getting rid of the old habit. We're so locked into this habit pattern of thinking now, which is natural because our schools, our parents and everything else, and we think we, we, think we have to think. <laughs> but you gladly give up the thinking process every night when you go to sleep. If you were really the thinking process, you wouldn't want to lose sight of it because it would be the end of you. But you go to sleep knowing full well it's not the end of you. It's just the mind thinking is in abeyance for a while. It's having a rest, and it needs a rest for all the chatter it goes on through the day, <laughs> endlessly, conceptual. <laughs> needs a bit of a break. That's why you relax into the stillness, into the silence, into your natural state. Mm -hmm. And you'll see and recognise that you are that stillness and silence. You are that essence in which everything appears in. You are that godliness, if you like to use that term. You are the pure intelligence in you. You are the absolute. All these labels we put upon you already are. Always have been and always will. There's nothing to seek, there's no one to seek it. There's nothing to find and there's no one who will ever find it. It's already and ever is what they call what is. What is is part of the verb to be. Take the word be for a start off. And we think you are, when they say it's being, knowing and loving to be is another way of putting chat, chat, chat and in. It's the being. Knowing. The seeing. And is in. But we don't put the is Ink, the ing on it because it doesn't sound too good. That's what what is is. It's ing, ising. Easy. Unaltered, unmodified, uncorrected. Just as it is. And you can't negate your beingness. You can't say, oh, I'm not. You can't say, this life is not here. It is. So you can't say, so that's how it functions. That is and it is not. Just like your reflection in the mirror. You take your reflection or an image in the mirror and then take an image to be me or what the other things you see, reflections in the mirror, uh, images in the mirror, they seem to be real. But have a look, go up to the mirror and try and grab an image out of the mirror. You can't. So you, but you can't say it's not there. And you move away there, it still appears to be there. It appears to be so. 
You can't say it is or it is not. So that ising, you can't say it is, and you can't say it is not. You can't say being is not, you're not being. Being is being. <laughs> is being is the being. <laughs> it's always one and the same. Ever changing, but never changing. Just like the ocean seemingly ever changing but never changing. It's still basically water and the water is still basically hydrogen and oxygen coming in again. And it can be broken down from that. I'm not a physicist, I can't tell you, but they'll tell you. <laughs> so there's nothing hard to do about this. It's all quite simple, quite easy. Nothing simpler than one. And it's not even one because one implies Two. You can't. You've got to start off your count with the one. Mm -hmm. But if it's not even one, what, what, what's the count going to be? How can two ever arrive? So there is only what they say. Only that. Mm -hmm. The Mahavakya is I am that. And then innately you know that. Innately I mean already inwardly. It's already known that I am that. And you know that, that everything is that because you say that's the tree, that's the flower, that's the chair, that's the space, that's the sky. Mm -hmm. And that's you. And that is me. Or I am that. But they don't mean that. That's making it, that's making it the personal essence. But the person, a word or a label we picked up from an ancient language, meaning the mask. And the mask, the only mask we got on it was a mask of concepts. Concepts are thoughts, mental constructs, ideas, images. Ms. Argazetta will tell you, if he was around he'd still tell you, but it's in his book. <laughs> we try to grasp it with a concept. And we fail. And he says we're bound to fail. Bound to fail means it can't do anything other than fail when you're trying to grasp it with a concept. Because it's the great perfection, I'll tell you, in Buddhism, Muslim, and other tradition, the great perfection is non conceptual awareness. That awareness is with you right now. That's the basic screen. The basic screen of awareness is no thing. But it has the capacity of enabling everything to express or pattern and shape through or as it. The awareness hasn't left you right now. You're not unaware. You know that. But you can't tell me what awareness is. But you know you're not unaware. That's the basic. I'm all real, really, you know. You recognize just the same as you know that the image in the mirror. Though what's appearing to be there is not the mirror, not an, Im an image that's separate from the mirror. So you know, you are not separate from the totality. There's no persona, there's no masked conceptual image. It's only the one essence that's appearing as everything. The one self. Not myself. Myself is a conceptual image you have about yourself. Who's the if you say myself, who does that self belong to? You can't say the long it's the self that belongs to self, it's not. So there's something that recognizes that you're not that mask, but we take it to be the mask just the same until you recognise that there's no mask there, there's no conceptual there. You've never separated yourself from the oneness, the non-dual, the pure intelligence energy, which patterns, shapes and forms, experiences and everything. And have a look at that thing you call mind. And see, that's all it's doing, patterning, shaping, forming, forming images, but we're discriminating with the word, the label we put on it, a label that tells me 
that I am different from you. You are different from me. I am different from the, the tree, the flower and everything. The word, put the labels on them. But what's the basic essence of them all? Isn't it the one vibrating in essence, intelligence, energy, that's patterning, shaping and forming and everything? So while there's sense of separation, there will be conflict. And have a look at that. How it functions. Something comes up and I like it. How do you know? Well, I've had this before. It's a good experience. We want the good things to stay there, not realising that everything is transient. It's constantly changing. Transient means change. There's nothing static out there. And so we don't want the good things to go, not realising they're transient. And realise that body you're sitting down with now is not the same body you turned the Skype on a little while ago. There are thousands of cells dying in it right now and being replaced. There's a wondrous intelligence that's functioning in it. It's digesting your food. It's growing your hair in your fingernails. It's breathing you, beating your heart. Just the same as that doing the same thing in nature. It's rolling the earth around the sun, causing seasons to come and go, the tides to come in and out. There's galaxies to form, explode, implode, volcanoes and climate changes and all these things to happen. It's the, same, it's the very same intelligence that's breathing you. It's brought you into existence. It's living you. Don't you get recognised if you settle down and to rest with it and be open to it, it's going to open you up to more than not your intellect can ever tell you, the thinking process. Become, recognise you are one with it. And if it forms you, let it express through you and be open to it. And that's where all the evolutionary thoughts and physicists and scientists and everything come along that are moving next to this hematological and coming from. It's when they're tuned in, whether they may know it or not, tuned into that life essence and let it express through. That we try to learn things. Well, you can improve on some of the things that are there by a bit of more investigation into them. But trying to learn something fresh and new you need to be open to it and let it come there. And it can just come spontaneous. Like science, I think it was Einstein that said he's worked out so many beautiful things in life. And he said, I was working on this problem and couldn't find anything, any answer to it. But I went to sleep one night and woke up next morning and there it was. And how many people have had that? When what they've been pondering over and wondering on it's happened to come about or the, it dawned on them what the answer was. So when we give that light life essence a chance, recognise it and allow it to do it, function as it is trying to do and wants to do, as it does in nature, it'll give us all everything that's needed. Yeah. And it does. But we say, we think we're running the show. So if something comes up, I like it. And I don't want it to go, not realising it's going to change. What do I do? To try and keep it there, I resist it from going. I struggle with it. Focus on it. Can try to grasp it with the concept and hung to it. But no matter how much I hang on to it and all it, it's going to change all the time. And it does. No matter how much you love them, want to keep them there, they certainly change, and much the same as your body certainly change. We don't want it to go again when that conflict with re is resistance. Mm -hmm. Resistance is conflict, and conflict is resistance. And resistance means we are at war with it. We're fighting, we're trying to keep it there. And this conceptual image that has got <laughs> any power of its own, <laughs> energy, a belief going in it, just struggling with it. We've got to keep this there. We don't want it to go. And that, because that struggle goes on, it stirs up the sensations and feelings and emotions in this body with the thought, the feeling, and emotion. The emotions come up at the other stage. And the anger, and the fear, the depression, the guilt, and the shame comes up with this conflict that's going on. 
makes us uneasy. And uneasiness is disease. If you're not at ease, that's uneasy. You're not at ease is disease. And look at all the diseases that are in this manifestation in the world. Mental diseases, psychological, <laughs> psychiatric, <laughs> all sorts of viruses and things come about. Something comes up and I don't like the other way around. We see something and we realise that thought basically the fear and the guilt, the shame has come up over we've divided against something we don't want it to go, so what do we do? We try to force it out, resist it again. Again, resistance is conflict and conflict is disease. Have a look at your life and see how much of your life is made up of that. And then ask yourself the simple question, do I want to do this? Do I want to be this way? Maybe there is a way out. And when I realize, well, I've looked in the mind all the time to find a way out, and all the mind does is perpetuate it. One thought will bring another thought and another thought. What's wrong with right now if I don't think about it? And to do that, they need to look, try and look beyond thought and see past the thought. <coughs> and take the concepts off away from the thought and leave it as pure mind. Without the thought, I can't say it's good, bad, pleasant, painful. I can't discriminate it at all. What is it if it's not discriminated? It is. It still is. But without all the labels and concepts of it. So you're back to your natural, effortless, spontaneous state. And I never find the answer in the mind because the very nature of the mind is to vibrate. The thinking process is a vibration of energy. It's vibrating into thought, concepts, ideas. And when you realise that every direction you've always looked in has always been in the mind and you've never found the answer, it might just dawn might hit you well. Good. Maybe I've been looking in the wrong direction. I've earnestly and sincerely and all the effort of my endeavours have tried to find an answer. Never did. Never could. And I've always looked in the mind. In what way is there out of the mind? Again, well, if I'm not thinking, pause the thought, full stop, don't go there. Uh, that's the direction to go in. And when that dawns on you, that very dawning, say, ah, oh, the answer not there, is a, an insight into it. Mm-hmm. And keep recognising that, you know, as the scriptural saying is, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How would you renew your mind? Don't go into the old way of trying to work it out. Pause it. Remind yourself. It's not in the mind. Every time it comes up, it's not in the mind. And then the saying that, what are you going to do? You're going to automatically pause, aren't you? Automatically be still. Mm-hmm. And it tells you in Isaiah, be still and know that I am God. And that I am is the sense of presence. Mm-hmm. It translates through the mind as the thought I am. That thought if it's still and the knowing's there, it's the godliness of you or the pure intelligence energy or the non-dual one without a second. Anyway, I've raved on enough. Those of you that have got some inkling in it, and a lot of you have who are coming here and can express it in different words to what I can. Some of you mightn't understand it fully, but it's open, you've opened up a lot. Others might see the clarity of it all and understand it. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't got that far yet and just coming to it and got any questions, do not hesitate to ask them. Because it's only by questioning, inquiring, you can be, might, it might be pointed in the right direction and be, look, be able to look there. But if you're not, if we're taking it for granted, like we've taken all these concepts, 
from words, the belief that we are a person. We've taken belief in because our parents told us, our schools and society have told us. Never question it. When you do that, you might find a way out. Our cat's got something to say. I'll let her have a bit of a go at once. She's got a good inkling into this these days, so away you go. I've just got a couple of questions. Hello everyone. Happy Sunday or Saturday yes. or whatever it is. Uh, we've got, oops, oh, they're gone as usually, so I'll start from the end. Uh, is non-duality a science, religion, or atheism, or all of the above, Dino asking? Yeah, well, all of those things appear in awareness. There couldn't be a science, religion, or anything else that didn't pattern, shape, and form in the awareness, in the pure intelligence. Mm. Any concept or any word or anything that happens is still only that. They come, we don't have to go and see where they come, where the awareness comes from. You can't, you can't negate it. It's the pure awareness. But everything appears in that awareness. Yeah. Which is, which is life. And uh, I like the approach in which you don't actually put any label on it. Like you say, non-duality, what is it? What, what really is it? It doesn't really matter. It, it's just a way of trying to point beyond the duality. So we know what is the duality. And what's non-duality is really, they call it philosophy also. But it's not really about the intellectual uh, knowledge. So it's not really a philosophy. It's not a religion because you don't need to believe in anything. There is no prerequisite for any believing. Atheism is also a belief. The belief that there is no God, that's a belief. Non-duality is not about the belief. It's about questioning and discarding all the false beliefs. So what was it else apart from atheism, all of the above? Science. Well. Science, it, it will sound horrible, but it is also based on certain preconceived notions. There was a Godel theorem that says that the science which uses vocabulary within its own field is not a science. And basically all of the science is like it. So yeah. it uses the axiomats and, and preconceived notions to prove another axiomats and preconceived notions. So science can be questioned as well. So, as Bob says, it is all of the above. I would add a none of the above. Yeah. Has, science, has science found, found the answer yet? It no, hasn't. They didn't, they had no. Has physics found the answer yet? No. Oh. Well, they found answers They're to very different questions, but not uh, to yeah, the ultimate yeah. question of life and everything. And they know much more than this little pattern they're likely to know. But <laughs> yeah, it's only Douglas Adams that found the ultimate answer to life and everything. It yeah. was 42. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. then he forgot the question. Mm. Uh, there is. Mm, there is another one, Timothy. Uh, I think it is a common experience to feel awkwardness when with others. And then Tanya, it is only a thought about getting and losing it. Who or what cannot be found? Uh, there is. There is colors and sensations, but no who, no substance or independent nature. Yes, it is a thought. Thank you, Rohan. You so clearly, gosh, this phone is jumping. Uh, you so clearly point to the truth. The thoughts, mind, are true, but can seem, but n the thoughts, mind, are not true, but can seem to be. Could could seeing there is no one there to be end of psychological suffering? Yeah, and Megan reminds 42 is the tram stop near Bob's. <laughs> yeah, and we have two ways to get to Bob. One's jump off at 42, ultimate answer to life and everything. Another one is 72 goes to the end stop. There's no further way. <laughs> mm. And now, uh, yeah, I guess those are all relating to the previous. I'll have to just find a way to get to the previous questions because I remember roughly, maybe I'll see it here. Uh, Tanya was asking about the situation. Oh, yes. 
uh, how can I look at a feeling of awkwardness when with others? Because I don't have much to say. Seems there is a belief in separateness or identification with a me. I notice thoughts about that and beliefs about the body's weight come up frequently. Is it enough to just ignore those thoughts or blow them a little kiss? Seems to be. Yeah. <coughs> well, who do you think is awkward? Mm. So you've got the conceptual image about yourself, oh, I can't handle this one. But what if you took the stance that I am the reality, I am that intelligence energy, and whatever thought comes out of me, I don't have to put the label awkward on it or anything, or whatever answer. Well, if I'm quiet when people are there, or if I open my mouth, or I think, mm. why should I be fearful of th thinking, worrying about what somebody else is thinking about me or saying, if I'm awkward in there to them? So you have a concept about yourself, they'll have a concept about you, you'll have a concept about them. Which concept, which is only a mental construct, is right? When you realise that no concept, no thought is right, who can be superior to you? Who can be inferior to you? And what would you want to the other person? And it doesn't matter, really, what you say when you're coming from that essence, you know? Mm. But you can, might be saying, the greatest load of rubbish in the world, but the resonances in it will resonate with somebody who is open to hear it. And the words might penetrate, but the essence in the words. That's why I say it's listening from the heart, not the head. When it's heart to heart, that's a true listening. And it's not from the physical heart. Heart is from the core of your being, not from the mental stuff that's going on. But what resonates when you hear a sound, you know, before you translate it, it can bring fear to you or wonder or all the rest of it because you don't know what it is. Mm. But the natural resonance will know. If it's a, a sound to be aware of, you, you know it's dangerous and you'll move, move, move away or do something about it. If it's a sound of joy, well, you'll warm to it, greatly. But in the words and, and the description, you know, you might be saying something that's a lot of crap, but the resonance in it, the, the love and the life that's in it, will somebody open to it will hear that. Like many years ago to me when I was talking this stuff, somebody come after me and he says, and said to me, I like what you say and I want what you have. Mm. And I turned them to look at this stuff and they've been going, going well ever since that time. You know. The ups and downs of life have come Mm. But they recognise their nature and it goes on. And that's the same with quite a few people have done that. Yeah. The same with myself. When I recognised that I or resonated with I wasn't the body and the mind, something I'd heard many times, but this particular day or way it was said, something in this pattern resonated with it and say, This is it. Mm. And I'll never be there again. Caught and again I was, but it wasn't the same. And the more it's seen through, the more clarity there is, like the sun and the clouds. When the clouds clear away from the sun, there's more clarity there. The space is not obscured anymore. When there's more clarity in the so-called mind, when you're not conceptualising and locking in and all the thoughts, there's more, there's more presence there, there's more awareness there, and there's clarity, not obscured. Yeah, I'll also add that uh, you've got a good idea, Stanya. Yes, blowing him a kiss and recognizing they're just the thoughts and or ignoring them, they are good ideas. But there is also, uh, when you are in a situation that awkwardness comes up, you can use it, totally use it to your advantage. Because that's a reminder that there is some sort of a concept blocking, like Bob says, clouding that clarity at the moment. And that that reminder, that beautiful, brilliant feedback mechanism from the body can actually bring up the question. Okay, so the questions, Bob has already introduced a lot of them. What's wrong if I don't think? Or I would say, okay, if I am that life, if I am that space, what is the space right now? What's the position of the space? 
And I tell you from my own experience, the most beautiful contribution you can bring into the group of others is to really listen from the heart. Give them this quality attention. Behave like a space. Space is still. In that stillness, if you actually hear and receive everything, that receptivity, and you can hear your own awkwardness, you can hear other people, what they feel, you may, you know, that may be a reflection. A lot is always going on. And if the awkwardness comes up, that is something, that is an invitation to actually be even more present with that unique moment, which will never be the same again. And if you see that it is about, oh, this is about me because maybe I don't look right or maybe they think I'm stupid, hear it too. Hear it. Hear all those thoughts in the way that you see them as impersonal. They are showing up patterns. They're showing old fears, old habits. Give them the space. And then that's, that makes the, the awkward moment an adventure of discovery of something that you actually learn in the moment, awkwardness will be turned to something that is quite exciting. And of course, in that situation, if you can really listen impersonally from the heart or see it as impersonal, you may as well see it for the last time. And don't make it to a goal. If they show up again, that's equally wonderful because that's again the opportunity to um, to really be present with it, whatever shows up. And I think there was an answer. Oh, yes, that was T Timothy saying that it is a common experience to feel awkward awkwardness with others. Yeah, and it's, an, it's, an common, it's a common invitation and opportunity to actually uh, give it the space, be the space for it, because that's who you truly are. And awkwardness in you and in others, all of it. Mm. Yeah, it appears. So when, if you think... You know, you're be better than others. You're not so awkward, but if you think somebody's better than you, mm. is that to see the, again, is that sin, you know, uh, yeah. labelling things and discriminating them? See, it all is. See, as it is. As yeah. Isaiah says, be still and know that I am God. Mm. I am is God. <coughs> yeah, there is and another. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, be be still, I know that yeah. I am is God. Yeah. Be still, break that down. Be still and know mm. that, I, that there is, I am is. Will it? Mm. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be, be still. Be still. And be. And be. Be, yeah. All oh. that, the being. Uh, because there is a clarification on that question here. Tanya seems to be I got it, I lost it happening here. That concept, that story. And Rohan is answering on this one. Who or what is the I that got it and lost it? Mm. What is it literally? Can it be found? As Bob says, does, does it have any substance or independent nature? Or is it just a thought? Beautiful. I got it, I lost it. It's a thought. Yeah. It's a flying thought. Don't believe it. Uh, thanks, Tanya. Excellent. Revealing the great secret, what I have got, it has to lose it. What is observer, witness, or both getting and losing can't be lost or found. This is Amarnath. Beautiful. Yeah. What you are can't be lost or found. Mm. And the thoughts of losing and, and finding, absolutely, uh, they, may, they may fly through. Mm. Judith says, love the, last, the laughter, so nice to hear, miss you both, you were laughing, I think there was one more comment on be, you being cheeky cosmic today, Bob, that's from uh, Mukti, yeah. yeah, that's his true nature, he's a lot, a lot like this throughout the day, yeah. light, that's the enlightenment phrase, being light about everything, being easy light in 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 a meaning of cheerful uh, like weightless and also light meaning kind of bright and and happy yeah that's uh, of course there would be patterns different patterns showing up on it but that's a majority the joy of living the natural serenity it has to be good day some days <laughs> <laughs> yes every day is a good day and now 
Uh, no center found, just sensations and colors, Tanya says. And mm, to try to categorize non-duality seems to contradict the very nature of non-duality that Stas is saying. And again, my phone is mm. all over the shop. This Stas was answering to the man who was, uh, I think Dino was asking whether it is atheism or science or, or something else. I don't really know. Sometimes it doesn't behave this way and sometimes it does. Tanya, it is only a thought about getting and losing it. And who or what cannot be found. There is colors and sensations, but no who. No substance or independent nature. It is just a thought. Thank you, Rohan. You so clearly point to the truth. The thoughts, mind, are not true, but can seem to be. Could seeing there is no one there be the end of psychological suffering? <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. There's no one there. There's no one there who's suffering. Who's suffering. Mm. Yeah, but it's just, it just, uh, you can only see it in this moment now. So if you see it, it at this moment now, that there is no one suffering. There may be discomfort in the body, there may be pain. But there is no suffering, because suffering is a resistance to the discomfort and pain. If there is no one there to resist the discomfort and pain, they will resolve themselves. But if there is a resistance to it, I don't like it, I don't want it, I want to push it away, that is suffering, because that is fighting with reality, which is already there. And John David. I love you, Bobcat. <laughs> National Geographic says bo Bobcats are elusive and nocturnal, so they are re rarely spotted by humans. We are the happy few who observes your true nature. <laughs> That's beautiful. Rough. Beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful cats, <gasps> Bobcats. <laughs> Amarna, dear Bob, can you kindly explain these two quotes? Efforts are needed to become effortless. That's from Maharshi. And uh, our, your efforts has to exhaust till then self tests you again and again. Nisargadatta Maharaj. Mm. Yeah, what was the second one? The, f uh, the second one, your efforts has to exhaust till, until then self tests you again and again. Yeah, mm. exactly that. <coughs> It's only by <coughs> making the effort that you can recognise its opposite, effortless, isn't it? Yeah. And also I remember Bob was quoting Nisargadatta on some of the first meetings that uh, I was coming up. Uh, Nisargadatta saying that when effort is required, effort shows effort up. Effort happens, yeah. Effort happens. But there is no one who makes the effort. When you realise <coughs> there is no one who makes the effort, it's not really your effort. It's just the effortless effort, effortlessness in effort. And I like to think about it the way, you know, when life does things and, you, and not you do things, is in the similar way when you are in love. When you are in love with someone, you do anything. You move the mountains for them. You do any work gladly with a smile on your face. Come and, on. yes? Come on. And with that one, when effort is needed, effort will happen. But there's no effort maker. That's right, yes. So if, if, if there needs to be the effort to see the effortless, that happens by itself also. Exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's what also happens, uh, you know, when, when we go for a trip. He's got this 15 kilo scooter, sometimes loaded with uh, um, whatever, shopping. And I gladly run down the stairs holding that and jumping it to the, putting to the tram or train or even, you know, any, any sort of work that I could possibly do for Bob, I'm not doing it. It's life gladly expressing as the labor and it is obviously some calories burned in the process, but there is no sense of making effort or sacrificing or doing something hard at all. Same when you have you know, you know, everyone knows how it is to love someone and moving mountains for them or looking after like, you know, the, 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 the adult bobcat looking after the kittens. <laughs> that is the effortless effort, no matter how much it costs them. Sometimes the mothers totally self-sacrifice to uh, effortless effort. Anyway, that's uh, 
we have Rohan answering that question also. Uh, oh, and that's and that's similar to quote that I remembered. When effort is needed, effort will appear. When effortless becomes essential, it will assert itself. You need not push life about. Just flow with it and give yourself completely to the task mm. of present moment. That's Nisargadatta mm. answering Nisargadatta. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Though it appears to be putting effort, doer, but in actuality we are effortless, non-doer, only misnomer. <laughs> misnomer. Yes, beautiful. That's. Uh, Amarnath, when we separate from our personality, dreamer, we are one with everyone, out of universal dream, as no one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beautifully said. One with everyone, as no one. Uh, thanks, Cat and Bob, for nothing and yet everything. All of the above, none of the above. That's Amarnath too. Yeah, you've got a poetry sort of a feeling today that's nice beautiful mm. and caroline bless i look forward to being able to make it next time ah that was half an hour ago and jane who is feeling awkward is that not just a memory or image of you as bob says that is only a concept of you the persona or image is not the real all conflict arises between the alleged me and the other. Yeah, absolutely. And good point, Tanya says. Yes, there did seem to be a subtle image noticed when there was awkwardness, but no one is feeling awkward. No who. The persona or image is just a thought pattern. I guess there can be no other reality. Thank you, Jane. Mm. <coughs> Julia, you are the most beautiful pattern of love it has ever been my privilege to witness. I love you. And we love you, Julia. <laughs> How beautiful, Bob and Kat. Thank you. I'm taking the invitation to explore the so-called awkwardness. Is there nothing, if there is nothing to say, that is just what is? That's Tanya. Hmm. Yeah, G yeah. Just listen. Just hear everything. <coughs> Leave it is in all its purity. Mm. Just, just as it is. Yeah, and every pattern in the universe really cares more to be heard than anything. I mean, if you are in a group of people and they are speaking, they are communicating also beyond what they say. They may be talking shallow stuff about whatever TV shows. But there is a communication going underlying it. The feelings, the emotions, the being, all of it is being communicated. And when you think what you're going to say, you actually miss out. All that communication happened. Just be that silence, be that receptive space of receiving. People feel seen and loved when they are heard. That's the greatest gift you can give them. And that's more than you could give them by, than by hammering something that you have to do or say. By, by teaching them, that's, it's not, you know, teaching is actually kind of diminishing people. Just rather uh, hearing and discovering what they already know and highlighting what they already know than confronting or teaching them. That's it's only, only the discriminating mind that makes it awkward or fearful or unhappy. Mm. It's not discriminating, it's just as it is. No, mm. they're either good or bad, but thinking makes it. Mm. You can't, no, what it is means no preference, no partiality, no comparison. Mm. You're not comparing it with anything, just as it is. And also awkwardness <coughs> is the uh, temporary absence of relaxation, so just relax into it. Try <laughs> more we put on. Yeah. <coughs> no one is doing effort, effortless effort, call it efforting. That is Ray saying. And Tas, I can see that I've been trying to know non-duality, a me that wants to locate a me and gets it. 
in this wild goose chase, it is seen that I can't know non-duality simply because there is no me to know it. Thank you, dear Bob. Yeah. Beautiful. And to know non-duality, you are non-duality. So yeah. That's why I can't know it. That's right. The eye can't see itself. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin Bob, for it's beyond effort or effortlessness. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Who was that one? That was Armana. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now I wonder how many of the comments I missed out because they're jumping around the place. Mm. Some good questions to me. Yes. And some good input into it too. Mm. <coughs> Most relevant, I'll just change the comment. And now, Amarnas, thank Bob, thanks Bob for your discrimination is needed only in duality, mind. There is no mind. Mm. That's right, yeah. No discrimination. Mm. Yeah, I think we've been there. No discrimination going on, that's what they call pure mind mm -hmm. or no mind or unborn mind. Everything is perfectly resolved in the unborn Buddha mind. So, thank you, sir. Mm. No discriminating thoughts arise, the old mind ceases to be. Yes. And yes, this one is, I'll just try the fourth option. That will only give me last few. Bob is watching a cat. That's right. <laughs> Basking in the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no more thoughts? Uh, yes, we have... Uh, from John David, everything has changed, yet nothing has changed with understanding. A beautiful paradox that appears only to the conceptual mind. The world is again mysterious and an adventure to be lived like the youthful heart we never lost. How beautifully said. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, like Bob mentioned, the ocean, ever changing, never changing. And yes, understanding doesn't change anything and it changes everything. <laughs> it is a paradox, but yes, it is a paradox for the mind. With no mind, everything is just as it always was. So every moment when you are in the no mind, you already fully understood that is full understanding expressing truth and then the mind comes and makes the whole of a difference but only to the mind not to the reality yes yeah, transient everything's constantly changing the changeless change mm. yes and then like uh, like john says it's a mysterious way of everything being lived, life moving and leaving it. Rohan says, it is funny, there is this concept that Bob and Kat are in Melbourne and I am somewhere far away, um, listening on my computer. But this is not my actual direct experience. It is just a belief. <coughs> the truth is that Bob and Kat are here and now and not at all far away everything is here and now mm. brilliant that's it yeah. yeah direct experience is always the one to listen and trust to at least when we investigate that stuff mm. Mm. beautiful yeah just like <coughs> you get on a phone to somebody overseas yes that might be a previous day there so you're talking to them yesterday <laughs> and they're talking to you tomorrow it's, mm. <laughs> it's only in the concepts isn't it it's the conversation is going on right now. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah, it is one layer of a dream that uh, Kat and Bob are in Melbourne, I am not. And there is another layer of dream, Kat and Bob are here now, and I'm interacting with them now, that's the dream too. Like, you know, we may be going for the, for the little walk after the talk, that's a dream. Us being outside now, me thinking of us being outside and walking, uh, that's a dream. But us sitting here, and talking to that camera, that's a dream too, because there is just life. Life dreaming itself a costume, dreaming itself that speaking, that mouthpiece, dreaming itself that holes through which it sees the world, that's a dream too. But that dream is, yeah, the, when the whole layers of the dream are recognized as a dream, mm -hmm. there is a lightness. Everything's here and now. Now, Amarnath, uh, today both of you, Kat and Bob, appear tiger and tigers, eating all our concepts, minds, yet you were like thousands of mothers and fathers, love, so caring and affectionate, plus compassionate. Oh, you're just so, oh, you're so beautiful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you've got such a way with words, such a poetic way of expressing. And yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful gift, because being able to see the beauty is already a wonderful blessing. But to put that in a, in a beautiful words so that others can see that beauty as well, what a gift. It's nothing like beauty. Beauty opens your heart. Beauty is just bringing everything back to love and appreciation. And now, Ben. The only enemy of the mind is the mind. The only victim of the mind is the mind. Vilifying the mind for giving you a conceptual experience of being is like blaming the police sketch artist for not bringing you the suspect. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. When you look at it, see this thing called the mind, there's no such thing. That's right, yeah. It's, and we're it's, putting the label on and believing that's what the thing called mind is doing. Mm. But all the mind is, is thought, and all thought is, is word, word, sound, sounds a vibration. That's right. All this is a vibration of energy, we put all these concepts on, mm. and the energy of belief going in, making it real. Yes. So we've got a story. That's right, and that story being believed, it gets so real, it gets so realistic, and we are all... Oscar actors in that stories. We all deserve the prize in a way the mind believes itself to be unworthy and yeah, it is all the dance. <laughs> Kiran, is there a correlation between dreaming and meditation? Often while meditating I remember dream locations from years ago. Not the dream itself, but the dream setting. Example, a house or building. Weird question, I know, but just wondering why. Mm. Yeah, I have that sort of uh, experiences even without meditation. Sometimes the smell will trigger some memory and I never know, actually, sometimes I do and, and often I don't, whether it was a location in the dream world at night while I was sleeping or whether it was some of my travels because for 17 years I was working as a ship's navigator. I've been to so many places, it's actually hard, hard to remember. But I've also dreamt a lot of places. So I don't know if that has anything to do with meditation. Uh, meditation might provide a quiet space for those sort of uh, mm, little flowers to, to come up and, and make themselves know. For me it happens without meditation as well. Yeah, I would say just enjoy it because it's amazing, isn't it? It doesn't mean anything, but uh, unless you want to give it a meaning or a story, I wouldn't. But it's amazing. You want to say something about what, it? What was the question again? Uh, Kiran has this uh, curious uh, thing happening in her life that sometimes she sits in a meditation and uh, dream locations come up. Like, you know, whether they are dream dreamt in this waking dream or the night dream, it's not really that relevant, but they just come up, ideas, the images. 
come up. <coughs> but it all depends what you're trying to do in the meditation. Trying to become silent or still. Mm. When you're very trying, when you realise that the whole thing comes from the silence and stillness, and it's already there. Yes. Trying to become still or silence or quiet, that's what we meditate for. Mm. Very trying is the thing that puts the, the, the brakes on it, stops it from happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't really mention about trying, just the phenomena. No, but well that's when we sit down. Mm. We try to become still or silent. Yes. Instead of relaxing and letting it happen. Mm. Yes, so uh, Jesse says no questions, no answers, just sitting with dear friends in love. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesse. Mm. And Mukti says the same. Beautiful. That's it. Yes. Yes, thank you for being there, even though you have no questions. It's just sharing that, that joy of recognition. Uh, John David, a flower responds to the sun. Distance has no bearing on the light it receives. Gorgeous. Yeah. The flower doesn't even conceptualize any distance. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Bob talks of undistracted non-meditation, Megan says. Mm. Yeah, where the trying doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. No one to meditate, mm. and nothing to meditate on. Yeah. That's a natural meditation that's going on right now, if you would. Mm. Yeah. Take yourself out of the road, take the trying out of the road and everything. That's right, yeah. And the spontaneous breathing, seeing, hosting, touching your belly, it's all spontaneously happening. Mm. Yeah, what does really the word meditation or meditation means? I never thought of checking. Meditating, just being present. So, as life, you're always present. <coughs> so, you are the meditation. Mm. Mm, that is it for now. And the undistracted part, what means you're not... Contriving. Living, yeah, you're not mm. contriving. Contriving with the or thinking. Or discriminating anything. Mm. Everything is as it is. Yes. Yes, yeah, not trying to push away and I think when thoughts or feelings or images come up, uh, the ambitious meditator would want it to uh, put effort to push it down. And that's a lot of action yeah. and a lot of resistance <coughs> and a lot of assertion of the control and power of that meditator, that assumed meditator, exercising, I can do it, I'll control it. That's the total opposite of what the meditation uh, yeah. as, the, uh, as the principle was. I tried for years. Mm. All sorts of things could distract you. Yeah. Fly, fly landing on your nose or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> or a sound or somebody moving in the room. Yeah. The very dry and you screw up, face harder and try and try and try. <laughs> Not to mention the narrative or yeah. or images and all the oh. yes, all the previous jobs coming out now. <laughs> yes. So they think, who's trying? Me? Is there a me? Mm -hmm. No. Well, full stop. Full stop. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that sitting won't happen. No. Yeah. Things will come up. Yeah. And they'll move on also. Mm. Nothing more. And we don't have any more questions and we have less people watching, so I guess that may be time. Oh no, there is something. Okay. Out of long habit, we step into thoughts and get carried away by them rather than stepping out of them. Mm. Yeah. That's right. The whole <coughs> habit patterns seem very real. Mm. But habits can be broken. You recognize them as a habit pattern. Yeah, and thoughts, uh, almost as every other form of, of life, 
uh, developed its survival strategy and because thought depends it's like a, almost like a parasite or a virus it depends on the organism that it is feeding off it depends on attention so it actually developed a great survival strategy to attract attention and hold attention and get attention so thoughts are really attractive they're really seductive they look really promising you a ride so they're really brilliant in the way they grab that attention and and make themselves actualize themselves leave themselves to the fullest but again this is just a habit uh, if you recognize yourself that uh, as that space you don't fight the thoughts they show up they get as much as attention as they do and they disappear just like a passing clouds there is no investment there is no particular attraction and there is no repulsion either they just there is no one to be attracted there is uh, just what's happening <laughs> we get a couple of more apps if i can move it we are leaving proof that habits can be broken, Bob. That's Jane. Yeah, that's yeah. true. She's yeah. one of them. Yes. And Amarnath, uh, Bob, can you kindly explain about dealing, no dealer, with memories? I see as non-dual awareness manifested as dual consciousness in the concept of time, uh, in timelessness. Can you kindly explain about dealing, no dealer, with memories? I see as non-dual awareness manifested as dual consciousness in the concept of time, in timelessness. Yeah. Hmm? You want to explain the, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, consciousness appearing in awareness and time appearing in timeless? Dealing. Yeah, about the dealing, what's happening in the world, the, 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 you know, the dealings yeah. of the world without any dealer. I mean, this is how the world appears. The time appears in the timelessness and the consciousness appears in the awareness. The, yeah. you know, the whole manifestation comes and goes. Yeah, just a spontaneous, a fresh ma emanation mm. with no static point anywhere, no substance. Yeah. Vibration that comes and goes. Seemingly vibrates into pattern, shapes, and forms, mm. but there's no, nothing static about any of it. Yeah. It's constantly changing. And also, if not for the so-called dual consciousness, there would be no manifestation. Yeah. 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 There is either duality, which is diversity, multiplicity, and all that uh, juiciness of life, and the infinite amount of shapes and patterns and forms and vibration, or nothing. That's it. There'd be no manifestation. Mm. <coughs> you couldn't discriminate it. You've got no thought. Yeah. Just is pure. So it is, it is really an expression. The emptiness expresses and catches a glimpse of itself as, as the form. A multitude of them. And the form is nothing other than the emptiness. That's right. So no, really no thing has ever happened just the same in change. Mm. Yeah. And it's always in the opposite step. Yes. And uh, God, I feel like acting every role, the seeker, the victim, the me-doer, the non-doer me, etc. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well, acting happens. If you're the reality, mm -hmm. you must be. Yes. Yes, as life, yes. Life is putting all these different, different costumes. It's just when that role-playing is recognized then there is no pain or suffering in the role. But yeah, nicely said. And Mukti, Bob, can you please speak about how you broke habits without reinforcing a me? Well, so <laughs> mm -hmm. so seeing there's no me, recognizing there is no me, for a start off, where can the habits, what do they can fixate on? Who's going to who take or what takes them on board? Mm. If they're not taken on board, where can they dwell? We go back to the old habit, we, 
gone back into a believed in conceptual image of thought of some sort and, and take it to be real again, something there. Mm. But if it's just vibration, continuous vibration, nowhere to fixate on, uh, who does anything? Yeah. Constantly moves on. Mm. And when did it, you know, when you see it, that, you know, there's no need to go with it, you know. The habit of drinking, you know, mm. couldn't stop when, was, uh, uh, you know, who's doing it? Me. If there's no me there, who has the desire, who thinks the need of it, who wants it? Mm. And yet there's still a mystery about it because, you know, Nisargadatta knew there was no me and he still kept his habits. And oh, some yeah. habits we don't want to break. You don't yeah, want to yeah, break. Yeah, we don't want to do anything. Mm. If you don't do anything about it, you won't. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, recognition is usually... Uh, because the, the when the habit is recognized uh, from that impersonal space, then there's no investment. There's not even that urge or... Uh, fuel to break it yeah. that makes it less important and it may just drop off but there are habits like uh, chemical addictions or other things that need another approach and usually life delivers it if there is I if there is a readiness and ripeness or if there is if that's the, w the life has it that's the way life has it it delivers and who knows I mean you know well if you're getting some you know, if it's doing some damage and you realise it and don't want to do it, you don't, mm. you want to. But uh, how you do it without reinforcing a me? No. Well, hand it over, what they call hand it over. <laughs> Let it, give it to that essence that you are. Surrender? Mm. Surrender the me? <laughs> well, the me doesn't exist. When you recognise it doesn't exist, who needs to surrender it? Yeah, the, in the twelve-step programs you do because oh, that, yeah. yeah, that's how how you broke your habit pattern of drinking. Yeah, the, that habit pattern was broken before Bob met Nisargadatta, and it was through the surrender of the me to the power greater than oneself and power of the group and a lot of attention. Well, sometimes it may be necessary for the life to do reinforce the me for some actions. Yeah. It's a belief there. and uh, Well, the so-called me was selfishness, self self self, 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 self will run right. Mm. And they say, you must be rid of the self, you must or it kills it. Yeah. It's a believed in separate entity or the self that's taken delivery of it. Mm. Who's got the habit if there's no self? Who would want to do it? Yeah. As I say, if you haven't got the concept about you or the other, without the concept, you know, who's superior to you, who's inferior to you, and what do you want of the other person? Yeah, but then if, if it happens so that you realise there is no self, uh, it may happen that nobody wants to break the habit. That's right. <laughs> and the habit goes on. Yes, well, in a lot of cases that's what it does, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. But then you ask the question, who cares? And you find no one there. <laughs> well, if it comes up that this is, uh, you know, it might come up in intelligence, as do it, um, there's a bit of damage going on here. Mm. Making me ill or not making good enough or causing all sorts of yeah. concepts or thoughts to arise. Mm. It might be the key to, to take notice of. Is it all happening to? Yeah, life finds the way. And let's see. Mm. Yes, uh, Megan says, thank you, Bobcat. Just beautiful. <laughs> thank you. And Kiran, uh, if it is a strongly repeated pattern and no doer, then how does it change? It was what? Strongly repeated pattern. Yeah. Like th this pattern, the, you know, the, the most painful and the suffering forming habit is the very, very strongly repeated, repeated self 
hypnosis that I am the body, I am the body, I am the body, I'm Katarina, I'm this, you know, and a lifetime and everyone else reinforcing it. That's the habit. Yeah, we think it has, we think it's strong and think it has some power, but there's only one power. Mm. Uh, it's a belief goes into it that's strong and it's, uh, we can't do anything about it or it's overpowered by it. Yeah. It's that belief again comes into it. Mm. I question the belief. Is it a strong pattern? It's a habit. It's a pattern. It's a habit. Yes. Who's it happening to? And it's happening to me. Well, who's the me? Look again and see if you can find a reference point mm. that's taken delivery of the pattern. There's no reference point. There's any static point or any substance at all. Where's it going to lodge? And it's got nowhere to lodge to, nowhere to take it aboard. What's, you know? Yeah. And it's not picked up. I'm not going to do anything, you know. Just leave it as it is. Mm. Yeah, like Jesus says, find ye first the kingdom of heaven, and the rest will be added unto you. Break that first pattern, that the me, the who is the me, where is the me. If that pattern is broken, and again, you're not doing it, it's, but the investigation, the I being inspired by that love, life to look at its own source, it may bring about the recognition and then repeated recognition. Or in some in some cases, it's just just one recognition, and then you never believe it the same way again. And the rest is going to be added onto you. Mm -hmm. Either if you have the pattern of smoking, the pattern will drop off. Or the pattern will continue, but there will be nobody who's bothered with it. So it won't be really a problem. And yeah, that's the main, main habit pattern. And even though it is so uh, repeated, like Kiran says, it does break. How does it break? It is not a recipe. Investigation helps, but there is no simple recipe how, how the consciousness wakes up in various bodies on pa or patterns. Or it, it, it does as it does. So, uh, some people believe that meditation helps. Some people believe that regardless of what they do uh, with their minds or with their bodies, it, it has nothing to do with the consciousness because it comes from a different, different place. And I don't know if the belief matters. I don't know if the placebo works in this case. <laughs> I don't think plus, uh, the, the, the consciousness would put limitations like this, beliefs and placebos. But what do I know? And then Amarna says, feeding fuel in habit is attention and belief in separate center, which is false, yeah. exists because of non-investigation. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Does it just naturally drop off as part of life if it's meant to? Well, it will drop off when the body dies, but it may also drop off before that happens. What's that? The eye, the, ha the habit of um, self-identification. Uh, yeah, there is, there is no identification usually, quite often when you watch the movie in which you completely forget yourself. Yeah. <laughs> if you see it's false and understand it's false, it's got no substance at all. You can say, oh, as much as you like. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these things. Just the same. You know there's no blue water in the sea, but you can see the blueness there every time you go out. But yeah. you know the truth about it. Mm. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to speak in certain ways because you've recognised the truth. You still say, speak in the same old, old way. Mm. But you know. Yeah. So she says, does it naturally drop as part of life if it's meant to? If it's meant to, you will find a group like ours and you may be inspired to investigate and that investigation may help if yeah. it's meant to, yes. Or the relaxation may happen if it's meant to. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a tricky word if it's meant to because it kind of says that it was pre yeah. uh, predetermined, but it's not, it's spontaneous. And, you, and I say that's what takes you to it too. It's, mm. it's, if it's going to happen that way, you know, you you probably won't do anything about it. If you think, I wouldn't have done anything about it, those habits. Yeah. If I'd left to my own device and thought I could get away from it, but nature, mm. the life essence wouldn't allow that. Yeah. There was a pain and that became so, and uh, worry, all the concern that went on with it became so horrific, 
you know, the horrors mm. and the DTs and all the rest. But it forced, forced me to look in places where I would never look before. And that was the chink in the armour. Instead of the closed mind, the mind opened up mm. to go where it would, where it, it was dragging me, trying to drag me to. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how life takes you where you ought to be. So, it's always such a creative life story. Every life mm. is like a fascinating book or a movie. And even though, even back then, I believed I, could, I was running on the show and mm. I was a good fellow having a bad trot and all the rest of it. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, and well, till it knocked that belief right out of me, and it didn't knock that out till I had to question it, yeah. and look where it took me to, you know, and a lot of the places it took me to, and I didn't want to go there, didn't want to do it, I didn't want to go and see this argument at it, but it, more or less, circumstances forced me through the pains and the worry and the concern to be that they know me. Though I say me here all the time now, but I know it's not yeah. it, that life has taken me to where it is, where I am today. Mm. And it's car carrying on, it's going to take me to where it ends, whenever that is, you know, yeah. where it comes to a loop. I hope it's not going to come soon. <laughs> but it'll, it'll, go, it'll go out of this pattern, mm. but nothing will be lost. Yes. Yes, and that even that is the story we love yeah. the stories and there's nothing wrong with loving the story so loving the story of your life loving the story of the synchronicities and the and the so-called meaning and purpose of how life was actually playing with itself playing that hide and seek flirting with itself finding itself glimpsing itself having insights that's just a, such a beautiful beautiful dance it's still a thought in the moment because when i stop thinking it's all gone, it disappears. There is no life story, there is no past, there is no how it happened or how it got me here. None of it happens. So it is a part of it or a layer of a waking dream. I'm here in that waking dream, dreaming myself the body and this beautiful man next to me. And also I'm dreaming the whole past of what happens before this moment, or even the before being possible to exist. It is all dream, but it's a beautiful dream, and when you know it's a dream, it's actually entertaining, and it's not har harming, it doesn't mm. cause suffering. We'll have to go. Oh, okay. I'll have to wrap it up then. Yeah. Uh, yes, so thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. And you have to excuse me, I've got to go. Love to you all. <laughs> yes, love.